With 66 brawlers in the game, there are over 45,000 different combinations for a three-person team. Some of those combinations work, and some of them don't. And for today's video, we're going to cover the top 20. We're going to start with the newest brawler in the game, and that is RT with Piper. And honestly, it doesn't just have to be Piper. It can be Brock or any other brawler that attacks with a lot of damage in a single hit, like B. Every time RT marks an enemy with his attack, they take double the damage from the next projectile that they get hit. Maybe by the time this video is out, that will be nerfed because that's really strong. But either way, RT is going to pair with these no matter what, okay? Piper shoots one of the strongest single projectiles in the game with her main attack, depending on how far away she is. So if he can mark them and she can hit them, that is enough for her to one-shot a good majority of the brawlers in the game. But the thing is, is RT doesn't even just have to be paired up with long-range damage dealers. Some close-range brawlers like Mortis or BB also all deal their damage all at once. But since RT is a long-range brawler, it does make the most sense for RT to pair up with them. Up next, we have Bo and Tick. Now, Bo's new super Super Totem has made a lot of the old synergies that he used to work with pretty much unusable, but the totem is still actually really good, and he's picked up a new few synergies with brawlers like Tick or other throwers. Bo can place his turret behind a wall, and if the enemy cannot get rid of it very easily, Tick can charge up his super very fast. This works pretty well with every thrower, including Grom, Barley, Dynamite, even Sprout. But it works especially well with Tick because Tick is really easy to hit shots with, okay? Also, Tick pumps out tons of supers one after each other because they recharge themselves, and his supers are actually really strong. I should also include that Gene is actually a really great brawler synergy with Bo because even though he's not a thrower, he's got a very long range and his shots are really easy to hit, and his super is one of the best in the game. Next, we got Gene with Max. Now, Gene and Max have been a very solid duo for a very long time. There's really no secret technique that you need in order to make it work. They just work so well because their attacks and abilities complement each other better than most other brawlers in the game. Both their main attacks do lots of chip damage, so it makes it really hard to heal when you're facing both of them. And Max's super helps Gene get himself within range of enemies to be able to grab them and then pull them way far back where their teammates are not going to be able to help save them. Max also has a decent amount of health to where she's able to stand in front of Gene and take a few shots while she gets healed up by Gene's magic puff star power. And once Gene's able to catch an enemy with his super, Max can deal plenty of damage at close range to help Gene defeat them before they have any time to do anything. Another really good brawler to put with Gene is Buster. Buster is even better than Max at tanking damage, and while he's recovering health from Gene's star power, he's also able to charge up his super because when Buster is close to teammates, his super automatically charges up. Now, although he's not able to speed Gene up like Max is, Buster's super can be used to protect Gene long enough for him to corner enemies or snag them with his super, and as soon as they're pulled really close to Buster, Buster deals maximum damage when enemies are up close to him, so it's pretty much a guaranteed kill whenever Gene can pull an enemy toward him and Buster. Even if Gene does pull out, like, a Frank up to them, between Gene's super, Gene's gadget to bounce him away, and Buster's gadget to pull him back in, the chances of survival are pretty slim. Up next, we have Gus and Meg, and they are a strong combo for a lot of different reasons. Meg's mecha obviously loses health over time, so Gus's super can actually add a lot of extra time inside the mecha. Now, the damage boost from his star power is particularly good for the mecha as well, since it already deals tons of damage, and it's easy to hit shots with. Plus, every ghost that Meg picks up while inside her mecha adds another few extra seconds for her to stay in alive in it. And even if Meg isn't in her mecha, most of the time she does have her shield from her star power, and Gus's shield with his ghosts complement that incredibly well, making it so much easier for her to actually recharge her super and stay alive. The next combination is Gus with pretty much any assassin, okay? Gus's shield is amazing for allowing brawlers to dive in and deal a lot of damage and get out of there quickly, like Carl or Daryl right? Even Leon. He can throw his shield on them before they use their attack to get really close to an enemy, so that they're much more likely to be able to unload all of their shots before getting taken out, which means that they're going to be able to take the enemies out and then escape. The damage boost is also perfect for assassins since it only lasts for a few seconds after receiving that shield, because that's usually more than enough time and they need to kill an enemy, right? Obviously, when we're talking about that extra damage, we're talking about his second star power, the spirit animal one, which boosts that damage by 25%. Now, it is unlikely that the assassins will be able to go in on enemies and then they'll also happen to have like a ghost around them but if there is a ghost around there then those assassins can pick that up and help keep themselves alive as well which is really useful next we got a very strong trio combination and that is pam poco and gus and you can probably guess why all three of these brawlers are healers 
and pretty good at dealing damage together, which makes it very difficult to take them out. Gus probably isn't as good as a healer as Byron is, but he's by far the be a better brawler. So unfortunately for Byron, he kind of took Byron's place, even though Byron recently did get a little bit of a buff. But you could substitute Byron in there if you really wanted to. Both Pam and Poco have a gadget, a super, and a star power that all provide healing, and Gus's ghost can even double the healing with his star power. Crow does counter this comp very hard. So if you're facing off against an enemy Crow and you know that you're going to be like in Power League or something like that, do not go with this. But other brawlers can't really do very much about this healing because even if they play well against those brawlers individually, that's a lot of HP for them to deal with. Another good combination is Poco and Meg. When Meg is inside her mecha, all healing that re she receives is reduced by a lot, but between Poco's gadget, his star power, his super, it really can add up a lot, and Meg can get a bunch of extra time inside her mecha thanks to Poco. And it's honestly a really easy thing to do. All he has to do is just stand behind Meg and constantly heal her since you can't really get close to Meg's mecha thanks to her super. So like, he's unlikely to actually be able to hit enemies while he's doing this, but keeping her alive, honestly, Meg in her mecha is a very difficult thing to take out. Like it's really powerful, has a ton of range, it covers a massive area, deals tons of damage. Honestly, at that point, Poco just healing Meg is gonna be plenty enough for you guys to win most of the time. But when she's not in the mecha, also, that shield that she has essentially buffs Poco's healing on her as well. And because the healing's no longer reduced while she's outside of her mecha, it's actually a really great combo. Honestly, when you're playing Meg, you're gonna wanna have a healer on your team. And Poco's arguably the best brawler for just keeping a teammate alive like that. And another really good combination is Poco with two other tanks, okay? Poco double tank has won world championships. <laughs> now, brawlers with lots of health, typically have to use that health to reliably get to close to enemies, and depending on who they're up against, they don't always have enough health to do it. If you have two brawlers with tons of health, and Poco is giving them both heals at the same time, it's usually too overwhelming for the vast majority of enemy brawlers, unless they specifically picked brawlers to counter this strategy. Now, I say tanks, because it doesn't really matter who you choose as long as you have lots of health. You can even pick up some brawlers with more range, like Carl or Griff, that also have a decent amount of health. But typically, Tankier brawlers are usually better. I like going with Daryl and Frank, but depending on the game mode, you might want to do something different. Speaking of double tanks, they also work very well with Max. Poco solves the problem of healing tanks so that they can get close to enemies by using their HP. Max does the same exact thing, but with speed. By making them faster, they can dodge shots and get closer to enemies, bridge that gap so that they can actually deal damage to them. Not only does the enemy have less time to hit you before you catch up to them, but it makes it way harder for these brawlers to hit since like that movement speed makes it very strong. Honestly, in a lot of these brawlers, the tanks actually have faster movement speeds in general, so boosting it further just makes them so much stronger. For our next combination, we have B and Griff, and they work incredibly well because B does really well on maps with lots of range that are wide open, right? And Griff has a gadget that makes it very easy for him to open up the map, and that allows both B and Griff to actually thrive. Now, there are other brawlers that can do this, like Colt or Brock, and while they're not bad with B, Griff is just a lot better than them because he can hold his own against close range brawlers. Plus, Griff's super is very strong on a very wide open map. And the nice thing about B's super is that she can slow enemies from a distance, and Griff can utilize that to do lots of damage to them in the case that B is able to. She, just, she can do a lot of damage. But I would also say that B's super pairs really well with B's super more than the majority of the other brawlers in the game. Up next, we have Stu and 8-Bit. 8-Bit really struggles early on in the match to charge up his first super because of his really slow moving speed. But with the help of his plugged-in star power, he can do just fine after that. The really really nice thing about helping 8-Bit get his super charge up in the first place is that Stu can place his speed zone gadget to help 8-Bit get from the spawn point to the middle of the match where 8-Bit is going to be around most of the time and at that point his own star power and super is going to be able to help co carry over things. And of course once 8-Bit's super is on the map Stu's going to be able to deal a lot more damage and that's really helpful for him. Another really good combination with 8-Bit is Colonel Ruffs. 8-Bit has some of the highest damage per second in the game along along with some of the biggest range in the game. If 8-Bit grabs a power-up from Ruffs' super, he actually stacks that damage boost from not only his own super, but also Colonel Ruffs' super 
which means that 8-bit can deal insane damage. Ruffs' super can also break walls, and 8-bit typically does better on maps with open walls, so that helps him a lot as well. And I would say that 8-bit's super also helps boost uh, Colonel Ruffs, but Colonel Ruffs doesn't actually do a bunch of damage by himself, so typically Colonel Ruffs' first super checks will be used on 8-bit either way. After that point, if they both get boost, then Colonel Ruffs actually becomes pretty strong. And another really good combination with Colonel Ruffs is Surge. This is a much more competitive play with Ruffs, okay? Once Surge upgrades to level 4, he's already one of the strongest brawlers in the game. Ruffs' super not only makes him deal even more damage, but it increases his total health permanently, at least until he dies, which obviously increases his survivability, and when Surge has more survivability, he stays alive longer, stays at level 4 longer, and level 4 Surge is very difficult to take down. Now, Surge really likes to keep his walls up toward the beginning of the match so that he can actually charge his first super, but after upgrading to level 3, he actually prefers an open map, which, as I mentioned, Ruffs can use his super and his star power to destroy some open maps. And even if you don't want to do that, I've seen some really competitive comps in Bounty and Knockout where Ruffs uses his other star power to just increase Surge's total health as much as possible throughout the entire match, and at that point, Surge can just become unkillable. Another really good combination is Byron with Ash, and this actually used to be one of the strongest duos in the game back when Byron was at the top of the meta. In fact, Ash wasn't very good, but when he played with Byron, he was actually arguably the best brawler in the game. Now that Byron is a little bit toward the, the middle or the bottom of the meta, it's technically not the best duo in the game, but it's still actually decent if an enemy isn't prepared for it. Normally, it's really tough to keep Ash's rage bar all the way full because he actually has to fall back and heal, and while he's falling back to heal, he actually loses rage, right? But if Byron can actually keep Ash alive, he can continue to build up his rage bar and keep it at max rage so that he's faster and deals a lot more damage. And this strategy is so effective that Byron's attack and super are almost always spent just healing Ash instead of attacking enemies because Ash is, I mean, he's a, an absolute monster when he's getting support by Byron and he's at max range. Our next really strong combination is Otis with an assassin. Otis is great at helping most assassins do their job. And when I say assassin, I mean brawlers that have like diving abilities like Fang or Carl, maybe even Edgar if you really want to play him. Once Otis lands his super on an enemy, whatever assassin is on the team can easily jump on that muted enemy without having to worry at all about fighting back. And that's what makes this so strong. Typically when people get muted by Otis' super, they start falling back so that they can heal and wait until it goes away. But there's nothing they can do if a Leon pops up or an Edgar jumps on them right when that happens. And the real reason why this works so well is that typically long-range brawlers are very good against Otis, but are usually weak against assassins. So this strategy actually allows these two brawlers to kind of cover each other's weaknesses. For our next combination, we've got the Triple Thrower. And currently the three best in the game are arguably Grom, Tick, and Sprout, but Dynamite and Barley honestly aren't that bad either, especially now that they introduce indestructible walls into the game. Now this strategy, it has a lot of flaws. It can very easily get countered by quick, aggressive brawlers that can just dodge the throwers with things or like jump over walls to take them, or even just break walls. But if if the opponent does not have a counter to this comp, it's basically a guaranteed win and it's very frustrating to play against. Even if you do have a way to counter it, it's very annoying to play against. Three throwers on the same map at the same time, especially on maps with lots of indestructible walls, can just, I mean, they can they can just stay away from enemies' attacks, cover each other from a safe distance behind walls. They can even take time to heal up in the back if they want to. And when enemies do find ways to slip past their attacks, Tick and Sprout have supers that do a really good job at pushing enemies away from them. For our next combination, we have Penny, Spike, and Gale. Penny's Mortar is almost impossible to dodge if the enemy is slowed down even just a little bit. Gale's Freezing Snow Star power makes it very easy to slow enemies down just long enough to where they cannot escape a Penny Mortar attack. And when they cannot escape from that, they're going to take a lot of damage. If Gale cannot hit them, Spike Super does a really good job at slowing enemies down as well. Now this is especially true if Spike has his Mythic gear equipped. If that Super hits an enemy with that gear equipped, there's no way they're running away. They are going to be taking a lot of damage and most brawlers would get taken out with that alone. Alongside the slowing abilities that Gale has and very wide attacks, Spike's main attack covers a huge area, Penny's main attack covers a huge area, and it's gonna be really difficult for the enemy team to avoid damage at all. Our next combination is Mandy and Squeak. Another brawler that has really great slowing abilities is Squeak and his star power can slow multiple enemies down at a time and his gadget actually can as well if they accidentally walk into it or if you're able to land a, a shot onto an enemy with it. One of the best brawlers to capitalize 
analyze on this slow is Mandy because of how powerful her super is. It deals an insane amount of damage and it travels across the entire map. So it doesn't matter how far away the slowed enemy is away from her, she's gonna be able to take them out or at least deal lots of damage. She also has a really good gadget that slows enemies down as well, which is good for Squeak because brawlers can usually walk outside of that blast radius, radius unless they are slowed down. So these two brawlers actually pair very well together. For our next combination, we have Terra plus Dynamite. These, this set of brawlers, they got one, just one really good major trick, but it's very strong. Terra can wait for Dynamite to charge his super, and then whoever she can pull in with her super will easily get destroyed by Dynamite's super once he has it. And they just throws it right into the middle of the vortex, and pretty much everybody's gonna die. If Terra can pull more than one enemy into the middle, then Dynamite's super will instantly recharge by hitting both of them. Even if the enemy does avoid Terra's super by getting pulled into a wall, it's usually enough for Dynamite to still hit them with his super, and the wall will get blown up so they cannot avoid Terra super again. And honestly, Dynamite doesn't even need his super. A Terra super paired with two of Dynamite's attacks will pretty much do exactly the same thing. And those are my top 20 favorite brawler synergies. But there are literally thousands of different combinations in the game that you could possibly do, so I want to know what your favorites are in the comment section below. I'd also appreciate you guys subscribing for future content and checking out my other videos right here. For now, this is Kairos Time ticking by, and we will see you in Brawl Stars.